Welcome to the channel. If you clicked on this video, I assume you want to know more about how I made this custom Elden Ring themed display shelf. Well, keep watching and I'll explain how I took some simple objects and processes to create the shelf and hopefully you'll be able to apply some of this to your future projects. First, I started doing some research to see what the art style is for the area that this character is in. Uh, most of my findings were uh, dark castles with a gothic theme. And then I went to Mid Journey and I asked it to create some ideas of a shelf that had a gothic castle theme to see what it would come up with. I like the idea of having the buildings in the background, but I was going to make the base to be more like a rocky outcropping instead of something that was like part of the castle. Next I needed to find some buildings, so I searched around and found on uh, Cult 3D model of the Notre Dame uh, Cathedral, which I figured I could use some parts of that. And then I also found uh, Vienna City Hall in Austria, which is also the same kind of gothic theme, and I figured I could use some parts from that. So back in Fusion, I brought in an image of the front and side of the statue and scaled it to match, so this way I could get a proper perspective to how to lay out the rest of the uh, shelf. Then I brought in the building parts here. I'm just th these parts don't go together I'm just kind of kit bashing them to get something that I like and then I built a rudimentary shelf for the base Just to get the scale and kind of lay out where everything will fit I'll deal with cleaning up the uh, the buildings first. So I uh, Exported the meshes at the scale that I created in fusion and I brought them into uh, Nomad sculpt on my iPad and here. I'm just going to uh, start cutting up the pieces so like the centerpiece i don't really like the the tops of the towers so i'm just going gonna go in and chop those out since this is going to sit up against the wall the backs of all the buildings need to be flat so now i'm just going in and uh cropping all of the backs also to make sure that the uh the buildings sit up against each other flat and there's nothing no parts sticking out i'm going in and uh slicing off the side so they all sit flush against each other then the last piece was the top of the towers. I needed to remove this little uh, key that sticks up because there's a different piece that's meant to go on top of this, not the one I'm using. To turn the base of the shelf into something that looks like rock, I'm going to use Houdini. Uh, if you don't work in uh, 3D effects or 3D uh, graphics, you probably don't know what Houdini is, but uh, it's used in pretty much every film, TV, video game to simulate things like water, fire, explosions, destruction. That's basically it's what it's known for. It does a lot more than that, but that's its bread and butter. Houdini does have a free version that you can download. It's missing some of the features and uh, other features have watermarks, but for what I'm doing here, it's perfectly fine. So this is the Houdini editor. Uh, on the left here, you have the 3D viewport. On the right, there's the canvas that's showing your uh, node graph. And then in the top corner here, I have the properties window for whatever node that's selected. This is just how I have it set up at the moment. There's multiple ways you can configure this based on what you're doing. And uh, something to understand is that uh, Houdini is a Swiss army knife for 3D uh, graphics. You can do a ton of different things. This is just scratching the surface of a very simple process you can do using Houdini. So uh, to start off, I have a file node where I'm loading in the mesh the, that I exported from Fusion. So here I'm loading in the uh, STL file. Now, um, STLs don't have a concept of uh, unit type, it's just a measurement. And Houdini's uh, default uh, size is uh, meters. So this would be coming in huge at 200 something meters as opposed to millimeters. So I have a transform node that's scaling it down to the proper scale. Um, I'm not going to go over every uh, node in this graph, otherwise uh, people will fall asleep. So I'll just jump to the highlights. If anybody finds this interesting and wants to know more, uh, let me know in the comments and I can do uh, follow-up videos that go into more detail. But if we jump down to this uh, attribute node, uh, by the default, these nodes don't do anything. It's just a container that you can work inside. So if we jump inside, you see this little graph. Um, basically what this node is doing is these are the inputs coming from uh, whatever you feed in and it has all the properties of that mesh. And then you can manipulate those properties 
and um, export them back out to change the way that mesh looks. So if we go back up here and activate, um, something to note, the way this works is wherever this little blue uh, square is, that's what you're currently seeing in the graph. So right now we're looking at this node. So if I select this down here, now you get the rock look to it because now it's um, processing what's happening at this point in the chain. So if we go back inside, uh, what this is actually doing, it's just applying a bunch of noise uh, to the, the mesh itself. It's nothing overly complicated. Uh, what I've done is, let me start at this end, um, the, the main way this is working is it's displacing the mesh along the normals of the mesh itself. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking the normal, which is specified as a uh, vector normally, and I'm breaking it into three uh, separate floats, so an X, Y, and Z. That way I can mani manipulate them in independently from each other. And then that's all I'm doing. So I'm taking the X, Y, and Z, and then f on each channel, um, I have this group that's applying noise, uh, and I have this group that's applying noise in here. So, and then I'm feeding them into the same node and chaining it together to get to the end. So that way, like if I delete this branch here, you can see just the Z uh, planes lost all their noise, but the front, back, and sides still have it because this is only affecting um, the Z. Um, and what these noises are, there's multiple different ones. You can pick this one, this vein. It creates like ripples in sand or water. And then I'm adding it together with just a generic noise. Here I'm using um, this one type. You can pick pearl and noise. There's lots of different noises. You can play with the variables to get a look that you like. Like if I take the uh, the vein, I change the uh, frequency. You can ch see how it's affecting the way it ripples. The uh, spacing, I can either put more or I can put less. So basically you just play with these until you get a look that you like. So now we have the rock shelf. Now we just need to uh, manipulate a bit so it actually works for the shelf itself. Like for example, we need to carve out a cavity that it'll allow the mounting bracket to sit into. So in Fusion, I also exported a smaller piece that is basically the, the part we want to carve out. And then I'm booleaning it from that uh, rock mesh itself. And that gives you this. So now we have the external mesh and then I've carved out the uh, cavity on the inside. Um, the other thing that needs to be done is w I need to flatten the surface for where the um, statue is going to sit and where the buildings are going to sit at the back so I have a flat surface to uh, be glued to. Uh, now in Fusion I made a mesh that is the footprint of the uh, statue and the footprint that the buildings take up. So if I show these, so that's the footprint for the statue and then down here is the footprint for the back so if we look at this mesh the other thing you can do in Houdini is you can uh, preview other nodes so you can see this is uh, um, the mesh that I showed for the statue and that's the background so now this uh, footprint what I'm doing is I'm converting this to a volume and then selecting all of the vertices that are inside that volume and and assigning them to a group so if we go here, so now we have all of the, you can see these are all the vertices on the mesh that are inside that volume. Now I do the same thing with the back and assign it to the same group. So now we have this, so now we have all these vertices selected. Now this node will take those vertices and I can go convert it to the polygons. So, oops, too far. So based on all these vertices, I can say, give me the polygons that these vertices are, vertices are a part of. And then we end up with this. And so now I've selected this section of the mesh. And then this flat node will just take all these and flatten it to a flat plane. So now we have this flat surface. And then I uh, have this clean node that removes any properties that aren't needed. And then I transform it back up to the original scale we started. So that way when we export it, it doesn't come in tiny. Now, to export this from Houdini on the free version, you can't export an FBX. There's um, an, an FBX node just for exporting where you can hook this up. You can specify where you want it to export and then you hit save to disk and it'll save it. That's blocked on the free version. But to get around that, you can right click on this node 
and come down to save geometry. And now you can pick um, where do you want to save it. And then you can pick what kind of um, geometry type you want to save it as. I think I used OBJ. And then that will save the mesh out. To finish off the mesh, um, I wanted to smooth off some of the more uh, sharp areas. So I brought it back into a Nomad Sculpt and just went in and smoothed off some of the spots where the um, changes were too abrupt. And then I brought all the parts back into Fusion to make sure everything's still lined up and uh, the scale was correct. And now it's uh, ready to print. I wasn't sure exactly how I wanted to print the, uh, the base because it was quite big. So I at first split it into four pieces and I was printing two on my bamboo and two on the uh, Solvo. Uh, but then I saw I could just barely fit it on my uh, X1 Max. So I tried printing it there too and figure out which one came out the best. For all three versions, I'm printing with uh, Sunlu's PLA+. All the buildings I printed out of resin on my uh, Saturn IV Pro. Um, I'm actually lucky that the machine's so big, they just barely fit. I didn't take this into account when I was uh, figuring out the scale because I didn't think I would get close to the build size of it. Uh, but I just brought all the meshes into G2 box and added supports and sent it off to print. For the resin, I'm using Sunlu's Red Wax Resin. I've uh, used this in the past and I found I've been able to get really high detail with it. If you're interested, here are the uh, settings I'm using. You can see I was uh, just barely able to get it to fit. It just cleared the vat. Now they just need to get cleaned up. Because of the rocky surface, I'm not going to be able to sand this at all, so I'm just giving it uh, two thick coats of filler primer to try to mask uh, as many layer lines as possible. Because the rock is supposed to be a dark color, I'm also giving it a, a coat of flat black primer just to save on airbrushing time later. For the buildings, I want them to be a uh, charcoal gray in color. So th that means uh, black and white and then a little bit of blue added to it. The rock needed to be a lighter gray to match the base of the statue itself. So I'm starting with white and then adding some of the uh, charcoal gray I used on the buildings and starting to mix to try to get some of the matches. After putting the statue up against the shelf, you can see the base is a lot more brown in it than just gray. So I'm going to start adding some uh, red and yellow to the mix until I can creep up on getting something that's close. Uh, 
finally, after a few attempts, I think I got something that uh, matched pretty close. Uh, to add some highlights, I'm uh, taking some silver paint and I'm dry brushing on all the uh, edges of the buildings and uh, over the rock. To finish off the painting, I'm giving the rock a uh, satin clear coat to protect the paint. Also, I didn't show my paint mixer previously, but if you're interested in something like this, if you do a lot of painting with spray paint cans, um, I'll leave a link to the plans on my Etsy store in the description below. For the lighting, I'm using these addressable LEDs. Uh, each one just needs to be wired with five volts power and then a signal wire that goes in and out of each one so they can all get chained together. With all the lights attached to the buildings, now I can uh, glue the buildings to the base and then I can uh, wire all the lights together. All the power leads for the lights come down to these two connectors so uh, they can be uh, disconnected if needed. And then I have an Arduino that's driving the system that lets me program different light patterns. And then for power, um, I have it going to a, a barrel plug that a 5-volt uh, power supply can plug into. The last step was to add some poster board to the back to cover the doors and windows to reflect the light forward. And then make some cutouts for the uh, wires to fit through. And then... Uh, install the barrel plug so it's coming out the bottom. Here's the bracket that'll uh, mount to the wall to hold the shelf. It's just made of half inch plywood and I have it on this little stand just to uh, mock up what it's going to look like. So the shelf will just uh, slide onto it and rests on the two runners that stick out front and then uh, the back plate fits uh, perfectly into the hole to stop it from uh, moving around. To keep it in place so it doesn't fall off the bracket, there's a screw that I have going up from the bottom into the wood to lock it in place. Here's what the completed shelf looks like. And now with the lights on. Uh, right now I just have them set to red. I tried a few different uh, lighting patterns. Uh, this one is just cycling through a bunch of colors uh, pulsing on and off. And uh, this one's supposed to simulate fire, but I think because the way the lights are spread out, it's uh, not giving the same effect. It's uh, kind of uh, aggressive. I don't think this one's gonna work. And uh, here's what it looks like uh, installed on the actual wall. For now, I just have it uh, set to solid red. We'll see if I can figure out something that works nice uh, in the future. One thing I might add is some just some white lights at the front uh, shining up to light up the statue when it's dark. If you made it this far in the video, you're amazing. Uh, comment below and let me know what your thoughts are on the process. Were there any steps that weren't clear or anything I glossed over too quickly? If you found Houdini interesting, uh, let me know and make sure you subscribe because I have some more videos in the future plan that's going to be using it. And if you found the video uh, informative, uh, do me a favor and hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for watching.